question, you know, the police state and police brutality and so on and why the system is so unfair. And wanted to get your insights around that because recently we've had this issue where uh, you had a, you know, African-American runner who's just running around the neighborhood. Back in February, you know, you have this uh, retired cop and so on, chases him down, they shoot him, video is captured, nothing happens. And finally, it took civil society to act um, and then get justice delivered, which again, we'll talk about later on around our uh, democracy and why civic education is important. But that makes a good, good case why citizens have to, you know, fight for their rights. W- what are your thoughts around this? Why, why does this happen in the U.S. so much? That story has so many dimensions to it. But let, let's just for the moment, you know, the, the story, the alibi or the explanation by the guys who shot him is that they thought he was a guy who had been committing burglaries in the neighborhood. So they decided to intervene as citizens. Okay, let's start. Let's just say not and uh, no disrespect meant to this man. I'm just saying this is a hypothetical. Uh, let's just say he was a burglar. Let's just say he had been robbing the shit out of all this guy's neighbors. To the best of my knowledge, the penalty for burglary, uh, once it is processed uh, in the court system, is not capital punishment. It is certainly not instant capital punishment. So there is no explanation that these guys have proffered that, or could proffer that justifies them executing some sort of vigilante justice from their truck on a country road. None. Zero. So no matter how you process this, even if this young man was Satan himself, this is wrong. So let's start there. Of course, in all probability, <laughs> he was just a guy out for a jog. And, uh, and they, in all probability, they, for their own reasons, and it doesn't take a whole lot of imagination to imagine what those reasons are, just decided to uh, to to assign guilt to him because they felt that he was suspicious. And then, of course, they all, they had guns and they had le- had them legally open in public because that's what the gun lobby has done to this country, and it incredibly normalized the idea of open carry where everybody can walk around with uh, with military weapons and uh, or assault weapons anyway. And uh, it, it, the, it's just astonishing on that level alone as well. But the larger issue is why? Well, it, it comes down to that he's black. You know, he was, he was guilty of jogging while black. And despite all of those remarkable legislative victories and judicial decisions, which have at least on a legal basis restored uh, some measure of our our founding rights as Americans, some measure of them to communities of color. The fact is that racism still undergirds almost everything that goes on in our society every day. And if you're skeptical of that, ask a black friend what it's like to go to a, a an upscale, upscale store and uh, just browse. Just ask him what it's like to have people eyeing him or her, following him or her in the aisles. Ask them how many times they've been stopped for a right. tail light. Ask them how many times they've been uh, perhaps even asked to get out of the car because there is a different set of justice for blacks and whites in this country. And, uh, you know, we, it's, <laughs> There have been improvements because we do have rule of law now and the law favors justice, but reality doesn't favor justice. Reality favors racism. So that's another disturbing dimension of what happened with this guy. And a third one you alluded to, which is the fact that it took civil society to get to kick into action for anyone to even know about it. Well, the good news is we now have these cell phone videos everywhere that captures the kind of police uh, brutality and uh, sometimes homicide that hitherto had nobody ever saw. 
I mean, this is a development in the last 10 years. And so we, we now have it in our face all the time. We're seeing, uh, we're seeing police violence into a degree that we have never seen it before. It was always in the shadows, which probably exaggerates the amount that right. it, it's actually happening because we see so much of it before our very eyes. But the interesting thing is, the, you know, the question isn't whether it exaggerates our sense of how often it's happening. That the, what's interesting is that a, a week doesn't go by where one of these videos uh, do, doesn't emerge. So um, it's happening way, 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 way too much for all of our achievements as a society, way, way, okay. way too much, which means we haven't addressed it. But the point I was trying to get to is because our newspaper industry and our news media, because their business model has imploded, uh, thanks to Silicon Valley, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, because well, <laughs> Silicon imploded. Valley also helped with the uh, camera phones and smartphones. So yeah, thank you true. for that as that, well. That's true. Thank you, Silicon Valley, for the smart, uh, for the uh, body cams. Uh, uh, Fuck you, Facebook, for uh, for sapping the media cut me dry. <laughs> so uh, yeah. anyway, the newspaper, the we, we have lost, and this is a key, key, key element of our democracy. Newspapers are supposed to be watchdogs of the society, especially the government. But in the last 20 years, one third of American newspapers has closed, shut its doors, turned off the lights, stopped the presses, and it just doesn't exist. And vast parts of this country are in news deserts where there is literally no way to, to get any local news. And among other very deleterious effects of that is that while the cat's away, the mice do play. And, um, right. and we're, all, we're all very much in the dark. So again, I guess we're gonna go level three now, unpack level two. Uh, and a few things stood out. One of them is when you mentioned that ask any, you know, uh, a black friend of yours um, when they went to an upscale, you know, store and so on. It was fascinating you mentioned because I was speaking to a, a vice provost uh, of a pretty well-known university who was African-American. And I was shocked when we were having a dinner and he mentioned that uh, Daniel, uh, my son, when he's driving late at night, and I, and, and, and I tell him that if a cop pulls you over, you look down, you don't look them in the eye, and you say, yes, sir. And I was like, you're kidding me. He's like, nope. And this person is a very well-known vice provost, a highly respected individual, and so on. So, so I, I, I feel you on that, and that was shocking for me because you don't realize that, right? Um, in, in, in 2020, that these things would be happening, but they happen again and again.